reviewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got some 2004 Chevrolet Impala. It's got some messed up lights. I uh, don't know what's going on yet. Just started to look at it and thought, I think it's going to be interesting, so I better bring it along. I don't know for a fact if it will or not. Uh, turning signals are wonky on it. Start the car up, everything seems fine. You turn on left or right turning signal, both indicators and side flash. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what's going on outside. I believe both, you know, turn signals in the back flash. They look kind of dim. Uh, I don't know if anything was going on in the front. Needless to say, when the automatic headlights turned on, both turn signal indicators on the inside lit up. And then you turn on the turn signal and they blink really fast. That's about all I know at this point. Probably easier to show you than explain to you. But we'll hop in here. And we'll just do a key on because it doesn't make a difference if the car's running from what I noticed. So let's key on. Everything appears normal. Turn on the signal. And you get both blinkies. So same thing. Left or right does the same thing. Turn on the four ways. Same thing. Headlights. One position into the marker lights. And everything lights up in here. So that's where we're at. So let's go make some observations. We will just leave the marker lights on. We'll go out and have a gander. Ooh. Looks normal there. Got license and plate lights. Everything seems normal there. No marker lights in the front. That may be a clue for us. Absolutely no marker lights up there. Now, click on our four ways. And we do have blinkies back here. We can see them blinking on the garage door. Looks pretty normal. Okay. Let me come up front. This is with marker lights on still. And it looks like that is the upper element that is lighting up. Okay, now let's just go in and turn the headlights off and see, or turn the marker lights off and see if anything changes. Four-way indicators are still on. And nothing really seems to change. Still got blinkies back here. We do have blinkers back here. I see the marker light is not flashing, so that's good. Just make sure. I don't see marker lights, okay. And just for grins and giggles, turn those off. Let's just turn on A turn and signal. That's left turn. And left turn back here is working. Blinking fast like a bulb is out. Both indicators on the dash are flashing. And a rapid flash in the front. Very interesting. I think that started out slow but picked up in intensity. Hey Trina. Hey. What's up? There's that. Okay. We've got some clues. What's up, Miss Phil? Glad you could join us. Yeah. Time is at 8.30. Yeah. Good job. Making, yeah, you feel like making your own hours now? Sure. All right. Fire. I will. Don't threaten me. Nice shirt, by the way. Way to, way to represent. All right. Anyhow, that's where we're at, folks. That's our symptom. Now what do you do? Well, what I would like to do, because it appears that the back kind of, you know, appears to work. We had turning signals. We had four ways in the back. Let me just step on the brakes. Just for granted. It goes where are they? It's the pedal on the left, right? So yeah, it looks like we've got high brake light, we've got regular brake lights. Okay, so everything back there seems to work. Appears that all of our issues are mostly in the front. Why it's blinking both indicators on the dash, I don't know. Perhaps we have multiple problems. I already took this headlight loose. I say we just unplug it and we check inputs going into the headlight just to see what's what. 
Of course, everybody is already yelling, it's got a bad ground. But we'll figure it out. We'll see what's really going on. Perhaps it is. Um, but let's get started. My Mac man just showed up. Grabbed one of these off the truck. Power probe, five volt adapter. Should be pretty handy. We'll keep it around. I'm sure we'll need it. Maybe not on this job, but someday. I don't remember where we left off. We we're gonna do some testing. So I have the headlight assembly out. We're gonna just take and unplug it, set it to the side. Ah, for the time being. I've also got us a wiring diagram. And it looks like, let's see, we did not have any marker lights up here. So let's just turn the marker lights on and see what's going on there. Okay, marker lights are on, or they should be on. We've got our power probe. I'm going to put it in feed test mode. And our marker lights in the front should be yellow. Yellow. Let's see, here we go. Here's we have power there, and the ground should be black. And being that we're in feed test mode, we need less than 10 ohms of resistance on this circuit. It puts a very small load on it, and you can see we got no beeping. Now we're going to take it out of feed test mode, go back to volts DC. And we have 11.52 volts on our ground wire. Pretty interesting, fella. And where does that ground go? Top left front of radiator support, it says. So that's got to be this little guy right here. All right, so we got some beepage there. Is it going to be this simple? I'll tell you what, why don't we... Uh, I don't know which wire it is coming out of here. Which size is that? But it's a smaller gauge. So let's just, for grins and giggles, let's just poke into this. 11.52 volts on that ground wire. I'm gonna check the bottom of this eyelet. Ground, ground, let me see if I can touch the wire. Ground. up here how about that how about I just pull the wire straight out oh is it gonna be this simple there mr. Eric da, 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 da. Oh, I'm missing some uh, jumper wires up there where are my jumper wires at let's go like this being that we just I yanked it out let's strip it back let's provide ground there. Let's just hook it to the bolt. See if that works good enough. Let's go back and check our ground here. We got it there. Hey, our marker light on the other side lit up. Yeehaw! Let's plug this one back in. This is going to make for a short video. We got our marker light here, which is the outer element, which if you remember when we were looking at the blinkers, that one was lighting up, which shouldn't be. It was finding its path through ground through the marker light circuit. We got markers there. Now let's see if our turning signal shabacle is straightened out. Well, at least when we, let me just shut the door. Turn the key on. The key is on. We turn our marker lights on. Now our turn signal lights don't turn on. We got our fix, lady. Well, that made for a short video. Gosh, dang it. Well, that sucks. Sorry, guys. I was hoping for something good. And I say that because I did not say this at the beginning. But uh, this vehicle came in from another shop. They'd replaced the multifunction switch, the four-way flasher, 
uh, in a turn signal flasher, which I think on this is the four ways, I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow, they shot parts at it, and uh, the guy told me it was a problem in the module because of the remote start, I guess. It does have aftermarket remote start. Uh, he determined it was down to that, and something, something, something. So, anyhow, is what it is, I guess. Easy fix. We'll just fix both them ground wires over here. And the only reason I did not mention that in the beginning is because I've had a few viewers get upset with me when I mention that, you know, a vehicle comes from another shop. Let me move you. So apparently I sound critical and I don't, I guess I don't intend to, I'm not running the other shop in the dirt. Fact is other shops send me a lot of work, so is what it is in either case even if they do uh, if other shops do send me work um, I do listen to what they have to say as far as what they've determined the problem to be or potentially to be but then uh, I try not to get you know stuck in that rabbit hole you know I did not go directly after or right for the remote start I like to always just gather my own data and just take it from there. That always seems to be the best approach because otherwise you can have a tendency to start down the rabbit hole when it's not a place you want to be. So we're just going to put an eyelet on it. I usually buy these insulated eyelets. I don't know why because I always end up taking the insulator off them. Let's strip that one down a little bit further. So just, uh, you know, if you get stuff in from other, other folks, just, you know, go with the facts. See who's who, see who's not working. And then just base your diagnosis on that would be the best advice I could give you. In this case, just from looking at our clues, we determined that the rear of the vehicle appeared to be working okay. And then we just went for the front. Why was it flashing uh, two turn signal indicators and stuff like that? I could see where a guy could get, you know, could get lost in, you know, looking at that. But we just went simple and looked to see why the marker lights weren't working. Make sure I've got a good crimp on there. Come on, fold over there, fella. There we go. Okay, let me get some uh, soldering material here. Get this little guy to hang out in the open for us. There we go. Yeah, I find if you just go with the data and the stuff you can gather, it usually gets you out of trouble a whole lot faster. connection but part of me was really hoping this was going to be something fun we, we poked it we poked it down there we'll put a little liquid electrode to get I think that's where we poked it if you do the hokey pokey you got to fix your hole yeah there's a little teeny tiny one right there because we don't want any future problems else fun coming in today that I'll record for you. Got some transmission lines on a Ranger, brake line kit on a Chevrolet. Coming up on Labor Day weekend. Give that a good snug. Let me get our wire poking repair kit. you're wondering works very well
testing that I've done with it before I decided to use the product. I had to play around with it. Nail polish also works good over little, little poke holes. Leave that like that. And that's it. Show's over. Now it shows over. There you have it, folks. Fixing the wonky turn signals on your 04 Chevrolet Impala. Uh, kind of an easy fix. I was hoping it was going to be something fun based on what I was told uh, when the vehicle was brought in uh, yesterday and dropped off. But it wasn't. It was something simple. Uh, no big deal. Let it be a lesson to you. Don't get sidetracked uh, and start throwing parts at something until you gather the data. Uh, you know, which we did in the beginning. Pretty simple. You know, play with stuff. Turn stuff on. See what works. See what doesn't. See what affects what. Uh, in, 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 in what manner. You know, I think it was pretty quick in the beginning to identify the fact that the rear of the vehicle seemed to work fine. Uh, so that immediately changed my focus from any type of inputs to, you know, turn signal switches, flashers, any of that, you know, uh, business or, you know, modules, I guess in this case, because, uh, you know, this is still old enough to be, it looks like it's all mechanical, you know, no integration of body modules or anything into turning signals. Um, so that immediately brought our attention to the front. And that's when I pulled that headlight out. I was going to do some tests and decided to get you guys and see what in the thunder was happening. Of course, with the addition of a remote start or aftermarket alarm system, which ultimately ties into the lights, that is always kind of a thought in the back of our head, but we will take and prove that out before we go in there and just, you know, rip and tear. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that. You end up costing yourself a lot of extra work. So that's it. Leave your questions, comments, criticisms down below in the comment box. And while you're down there, click subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff you do. Find us around socials, whatnot, patron. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.